Hi, this is Nicole Mook, a local realtor with Quinston Realty in Princeton, helping clients buying and selling real estate in the greater Princeton market. In today's episode, I would like to go over top five mistakes buyers make in today's market. Mistake number one, pre-qualified. From time to time, we will receive an offer with a pre-qualification letter. What it tells us is that this buyer is not as further along the process as they need to be. Because for a mortgage lender to issue a pre-qualification letter, all they have to do is to have a general review of your financials and give you a rough estimate on how much loan you can get. Whereas on the other hand, most of the serious buyers, they will get a pre-approval first. For a mortgage lender to issue a pre-approval, they need to check your credit score, review your pay steps, and review your W-2 in order to form a clear picture of your financial capability based on your today's earning power in order to give you a more accurate estimate on how much money you are able to borrow based on what condition. Buying a house is a huge financial commitment. As a responsible buyer, you want to know ahead of time based on what condition so that you can prepare yourself financially and mentally accordingly. Mistake number two, not working with a local mortgage lender. From time to time, we will see a mortgage pre-approval from an online company. I'm not saying anything bad about online company. However, you have to remember real estate is local because for any lending institution and they will need to use independent third party that is an appraiser to double check the value of the property to make sure that it is worth as much as the contract price says. And the benefit of working with a local mortgage lender is that they have a wide network of appraisers who are familiar with the local market. As a result of such, you have a better chance of having the house appraised to the contract value, hence to avoid any unnecessary issues between you and the seller. And mistake number three, submit a lowball offer. Yes, we have been hearing in the media or we have seen on the social media saying, oh, the housing market is cooling down and uh, more inventories on the market or prices are coming down, right? Well, again, you have to remember, real estate is very local. What's happening in California or Texas might not be happening here in Princeton and its central New Jersey area. So you want to work with a knowledge broker who not only understand the trend at the national level, the state level, but also the trend, what's going on in the local market. Hence, to help you prepare your offer accordingly. For a house that has been on the market for a while, and then there's one way to prepare an offer, maybe you can come in at asking price or slightly lower, depending on the condition and so many other aspects. Whereas when you are making an offer that attracts many other offers, and you will have to prepare your offer accordingly, right? And your chances are whatever offer you end up submitting, and it can be higher or lower than the asking price, but substantially lower than the asking price is never a good idea because it say first is going to upset the seller and is insulting to the seller. And also it's a waste of your time and your realtor's time because there's a chance that the seller will not even look at your offer, not to say to accept your offer. So be careful with that. Mistake number four, negotiate hard for inspection issues. We have seen by this kind of buyer, when they submit an offer, they package their offer so nicely that it makes the seller uh, very hard to resist. So in the end, their offer was accepted. And then after they finish the inspection, they will come up with a laundry list of repair requests hoping that the seller will do as much repair as possible or give them a large amount of a credit in order to have everyone move forward with the transaction. Well, this kind of approach seldom works because even though our market is shifting 
is shifting from a seller's market or a strong seller's market to a more neutralized, more balanced market. However, due to lack of inventory, especially lack of good houses, fully renovated with uh, uh, moving in condition houses, right? We are still seeing multiple offer situations in our local market. So if you come up with a long list of inspection repair requests, then what the seller can do is that they can ignore you and uh, cancel the contract because there are other buyers who are waiting to buy their house. And uh, even though the seller is putting their house on the market, the chances are the majority of the sellers in today's market have low mortgage rates. And yes, they need to sell. However, they're not in a position that they want to bend forward and backward in order to please you to make this deal happen. They can cancel this contract on you. So be very careful with this kind of approach. Mistake number five. Buyers stretch themselves too thin. So we've seen buyers like this. They were pre-approved for 800,000. And then we started looking for houses around that price point. But unfortunately, none of the houses were up to their liking in terms of the layout or the condition, etc. right? So they requested to look for houses at a slightly higher price point. So we did. And eventually we found something that they like and we made an offer on the house. And you have to know that, you have to realize that when we make an offer on a house, especially this house attracted multiple offers, right? You will want to package their offer in a way that is a strong, that will stand out. But what it means is that there's a potential financial responsibility on the buyer's side. For instance, if you offer the price that is a higher than the asking price, then there's additional money involved. And then if you waive your inspection contingencies, say, okay, I will take care of the small repairs, right? And those repairs will cost you money down the road as well. And also the appraisal contingency, say, if you say, okay, I waived appraisal contingency, meaning if the house is under appraised, then I will come up with additional equity or additional money of my own to make up the difference in order to make close on this house. So all these add up. So you have to, before you get yourself into this stage, you have to have a true understanding of the upcoming, the potential financial responsibilities on your side as a buyer. And even for buyers who have the, can afford, even for buyers who can afford to close the deal. However, to cover the living expenses or the repair expenses is another story. And we have heard stories like buyers move into their house two weeks later, the 10 year old AC just breaks down on the hottest day in summer, right? Things happen in life and you do need to have a reserve to cover this kind of uh, um, expenses, unexpected cost, right? And especially for those people who used to rent a condo and all of a sudden you are buying a single family house, you have to realize that as a homeowner, it is your responsibility from the roof to the basement and everything that breaks down will, I, will cost you money. And you need to have sufficient reserve, not only to be able to buy a house, but also to live in the house comfortably and responsibly. Anyways, so these are the five mistakes that I have seen repeatedly from working with buyers. I hope you find the information helpful. If you do, please remember to subscribe so next time when I have new video come out, you will be notified immediately. And until next time, hope you have a beautiful day.